the only difference between a plateau and maintenance is one is intentional and one is not. But just you do the exact same thing. It's just the way you look at it. If, if someone is in a plateau, depending on where they are, each case uh, is individualized. Some people, we break them out. Other people, it's like, no, you know what? Just sit there. This is proof. And this is you getting used to, okay, when we break you out and we get back to this, this is what your life is going to be like. When, when you finally reach your goal, this is how you maintain it long term. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck, and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Let's Let's go. go. If you'd like to support us in the podcast, join our Patreon where you get exclusive content, which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based and access to over 100 plus low calorie, high protein, family friendly meals. These are all designed by a professional chef who is certified in nutrition. These recipes are already in my fitness pal for easy fucking tracking. New recipes are also added each week. We believe that fitness is for everyone. So this is our way of getting you started on your health and fitness journey at a price most everyone can afford. So what the fuck are you waiting for? We'll see you in the Patreon. Dude, Noah, so excited to have you here today. Yes, Noah. Dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, been excited. Literally every single day as it got closer, I kept like checking my calendar to make sure I got the time and date right to make sure I didn't miss it. So right. yeah, because I know we've been trying to get this going for, for forever now, it seems like like, oh, one of these days we got to do it. One of these days we got to do it. <laughs> and we right? finally just did the damn thing. I know. Yeah. And I, I got to say, like, uh, I'm like incredibly honored and uh, humbled to, to be on the podcast with you guys. It's oh um, my gosh. Well, I mean, you, you guys are legitimate uh, creators. You guys are legitimate creators and you guys uh, do great work. And it's nice to be on a platform with other people that are worth their salt. Appreciate that, man. I would like to say that you're a pretty amazing creator yourself. So we're all, Absolutely. We're all in this together, Noah. <laughs> yeah. My biggest goal in, in the platform is to be able to provide an outlet for readily available information for accounts like uh, yourself and even like it it breaks my heart when i see people like alan aragon or lane norton or mike israel that have you know only a few thousand followers and struggling to get a foothold on tiktok yeah yeah. different beast yeah i mean what because they speak from science and it's not one of those attention grabbers where uh, a video is you know not going to go viral because they're doing something that's uh, fucking crazy right (laughs) and and attention grabbing, like the hook and the freaking this and that, you know? Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's, that's what I've largely found is when, when I first started, I was very by the book, very soft spoken, very specific with details and science and studies and stuff like that. And it wasn't until like I created a personality with the, with a little bit of the hooks or the gotcha moments or like the clickbait that, you know, things really started to, to unfold for me. It, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's like we're using the, the very tools that the people that we warn against, it's how they've thrived on making fitness toxic for years, yes. right? And now I see TikTok as an opportunity for us to use that same weapon to actually inform people correctly. Use their own yeah. weapon against them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, before we kind of get into it too deep, um, just want to give you a a few minutes to introduce yourself to our audience, everybody listening. So just just in case this is their first time hearing of you. Uh, Hopefully hopefully it's not. Um, I know you've been kind of blowing up recently on TikTok at least. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So hi, dude, I'll I'll just shoot my my thing that's recorded and drilled into my head. I already know what it's going to say. My name is Noah, and I'm a health specialist with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I am a certified nutrition specialist, certified weight loss specialist, certified personal trainer, and certified behavior change specialist. So if all that sounds cool to you, consider giving me a follow. What I do, my job is I go live daily to entertainly educate each and every single one of you, these two included right here, (laughs) in nutrition and exercise science to help you lose weight and improve health. In a fun, flexible way. Yeah. Love it. (laughs) Got it live in person. There we go. (laughs) There we go. I love it. Awesome. What got you started um, in the fitness industry? Maybe tell us your story behind um, what got, yeah, the beginnings of Noah. It's a long road. So like I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. 
And I mean, like when, when I first started, it's uh, much like anybody else because I, I, I hit rock bottom. I, I, I hit a, I hit a wall and it was, I needed to change or, or suffer the consequences. You know, I was significantly overweight, uh, living a horrible lifestyle in the bar, drinking, partying, mm-hmm. long nights, everything that's included that comes with that, that lifestyle, you know, and it was something that not only was affecting me physically, but mentally, but then also harming the, 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 the people that I cared about, right. Just through my actions and, and my behaviors. And I, I needed to change or suffer the consequences. And you don't know how strong you can be when strong is the only option you have. Oh, I like that. From, mm, from there, yeah. I went from 240 pounds down to 165. Wow. And uh, I did it in the worst way possible. Mm. Like the, the part, part of, part of the big thirst for, for knowledge is because I spent so many years making the mistakes that everybody else has already made. Right. And it, it's only made me a, a better coach, right? Because you can learn everything that you need from, from a textbook, but it's not until you have the real life applications or you go through those trials and tribulations that you, you really have a, a genuine sense of, you know, compassion and empathy and sympathy for the things that, that people go through, right? Like I, I got into it immediately from day one in bodybuilding and I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for getting that experience to immediately uh, start out with resistance training and cardio and diet. But the way I trained, the way I did cardio and the way I died, uh, dieted was ass backwards, ass backwards. So it was the clean, clean eating rice cakes and peanut butter every three hours on the nose, only fasted cardio and eating fish for thin skin. All of the nightmare stories that you hear that people do, that's what I did. That, mm-hmm. uh, that, that's what I did. And it wasn't until I really got into n- nutrition science where I just started reading a little bit and then got exposed to people like uh, Lane Norton. And then it just became this like spider webbing effect of like the glass shatters and this leads to that and that and that. And it just, you know, and then it turned into, I, I want to become a more serious personal trainer. And then over several years, it was like, I, I ended up connecting with Alan Aragon and uh, with uh, Mike Isratel and Gabriel Fondaro and Spencer Nadoski and Astrid and Nanjito and Alon- uh, Bill Campbell, uh, Bill Campbell as well. And a uh, laundry list of people. And Alan gave me my start is, is really what it was. And so I was looking into certifications and professional education. And then he was like, Hey, like I literally wrote the book. Like, I'm not just saying that, like I literally wrote the fucking book. Like I was the lead expert in designing the certified nutrition specialization with NASM like that. And so then going, going through that, yeah, I got exposed to Eric Helms and then I got exposed to uh, James Krieger and Jackson Pios, uh, because all these names were popping up in the literature. And when you see mm-hmm. those Brad Schoenfeld names, yeah. then it, you start following those people and you interact yeah. with them and it just snowballed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I love how you, yeah. you were able to get connected with all those people. And I know, Alan right? was actually just on our podcast a couple of weeks ago. And I know you guys just did like a, a joint uh, live and everything not too long mm-hmm. ago. So that's awesome. I love that. I love that you're following him essentially now on the podcast. So. <laughs> Alan is phenomenal. And I, uh, I saw, I saw the, like uh, the PDF that, that he shared from uh, being on the podcast. So that's, uh, that, that, that's pretty cool. And it's, uh, I know you've had a lot of uh, very valued members of, of the community on, on your podcast. So that speaks volumes about you guys. And that's also a little, you know, feather in my cap as well to be among esteemed companies. So thank you again. Yeah, we're honored. We're honored. Aww, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What are you up to these days? I know you've been kind of blowing up on TikTok recently. I saw you just hit 100,000 followers. So congratulations, man. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. And it's wild. It's, it's wild to think about that journey because I got to like 13,000 to start with. And then my account got deleted. That's I remember right. when you I remember that. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
That sucks. So I had I had to start start all over and like I had a maybe like six months ago I had like my first viral video and it, the viral in the sense like not not compared to like some of the videos I did recently but I uh, got three hundred thousand and that that bumped me up to like twenty thousand pretty fast uh, and it seemed like I plateaued. It seemed like I plateaued because the the gap to go from twenty five to to thirty was a fucking nightmare, dude. Some days I'd wake up and only get like 10 followers, right? And uh, in comparison, yesterday I pulled 25,000 followers in 24 hours. Must have something going viral. <laughs> I, think I, saw the, I think I saw your ice cream video that wow. you made. Is that what it was? So, yeah. Well, here's the thing. It was back to back. I dropped two of those. The first one went to 970,000 970, views. The next one, I think, did like 600,000 after that. So Your viral videos at once. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things, right? And to put this in perspective, I remember being on TikTok one day and I was in, I think his name, his name is like Coach Stone, right? And he does like how, how to learn TikTok and grow. And I remember, you know, him talking about strategies, do this for several months. You should be here. And I commented on it. I was like, man, like. I've been doing TikTok for approaching a year and I haven't even broke 30,000 yet. The next day, literally the next day, this was a month ago. This was a month ago. The next day, uh, I got an uh, email from TikTok. And I, at first I was like, oh shit, like, what did I do? What, what did I do? <laughs> Never a good thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was quite the opposite. They reached out to me and said, like, hey, like, we love that you blend a personality with science would you be interested in sitting down in a meeting with us? And so I did a Zoom with them, went back and forth a couple of times. And then probably within 48 hours, they offered me a one-year deal. I signed a one-year deal with TikTok. And since then, you know, I have basically managers that, that, that I meet with every single week and they, they help me grow. They tell me like, look at my video analytics and all that stuff like that. Uh, wow. Give me feedback on work and what doesn't. In the month since signing with them, I went from uh, 27,000 and then having a couple of viral videos and breaking 110,000 today. That's so amazing, man. It was one of those things where when the first viral video I posted this past Friday night, this past Friday night, I was at 35,000. By the end of the day, I was at 50,000. And then I posted the, the next one and it went viral. 24 hours later, I went from 50 to 70,000. And then 12 hours later, I jumped to 80,000. Changing your life overnight. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. 100K is right around the corner. And I'm, I'm at work and they're like, dude, like uh, it's been less than 12 hours and you just broke a 100,000. Since, since we had our meeting looking at like, okay, like you're at 80K. You're at, uh, like it was eight o'clock at night. You're at 80K. The next goal is to hit 100,000, right? Let's talk about the time frame, and then 12 hours later I hit a hundred and then uh, I woke up this morning and I was at 110. I think in your own uh, TikTok journey here, there's, there's a lot that we can relate to our, our clients and just people on their own health and fitness journey, because you had a huge setback uh, early on, right. With your account getting deleted and you could have just thrown in the fucking towel, be like, Oh, this isn't worth it. I'm going to quit. And that's what a lot of people do with their health and fitness, mm -hmm. right? Something happens to them and maybe it's an injury, which I'm dealing with right now, or maybe it's, um, I don't know, relationship failing or something. I don't know. Something comes up and they're like, well, fuck it. I'm not going to do this anymore. Cause I'm not getting the results that I want. And this is a huge setback for me. So they quit. But like that, that's right at the other side of that is usually when the good shit happens, right? You got to push through that hard stuff that's happening to you and not let those circumstances get the best of you. And you did that and you're now you're reaping the, the benefits of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like to jump off from there, it's also important to have realistic expectations. Oh, right? for sure. For sure. Because like today, and, th and th this is the beast that TikTok is just like it is with, with weight loss and just like it is with exercise. Things can be going good, but they, they don't always go good, right? Like, yeah. it, and this is the difference between discipline and motivation, right? Because yep. even though, like, I woke up at uh, 110,000 this morning, like, I progressed less than 1,000 today. But by yesterday's standards, in that same amount of time frame, I had tens of thousands of followers, right? So it's the ebb and the flow. Mm -hmm. yeah. But 
you hit the nail on the head there, right? Like think about your weight loss. Think about trust, trusting the process. Think about the discipline over the motivation where it was, like I said, a year, a year of posting and just doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and never giving up and just being like, I know this is going to pay off. I know it's going to small progress, short-term sacrifice for long-term success. Mm -hmm. And right at that, the, the deleted, the, after the, the deletion of, of my account. And then it was typing on coach stones feed. Like, man, I've been doing this for a year and I'm not even at 30 and like literally boom, next day, email from TikTok, And it's right. Like it's that cliche saying, you know, it's, it's always the darkest before the dawn. Right. Yeah. It's cliche as it is, but it's true. And a lot of the time mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm excited for you because I know what you're, what you're feeling right now, going through my own gr growth uh, phases on TikTok and, and having viral videos and things like that. I don't have those anymore, but I, I'm not really yeah. putting the effort <laughs> necessary anymore. Um, I, I'm, I'm focusing on, obviously the podcast is honestly my main priority at this point, but I, I'm so excited for you and happy for you because I know how, how good that feels to yeah, finally I know. start seeing the benefits of that. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. And, and re realistically, like, I, I can't give enough credit to uh, people like uh, you, Matt, and, and, and you, Beth, because you you guys both have big time accounts and largely big influence. And a big reason why I still do what I do is, is because of the content that you guys put out. You know, like Beth, uh, your video on my fitness pal recently, right? Like uh, I didn't news. You're the first person that broke that news, and I saved it, right? So then I could do my own video. And then Matt, you also influenced what I said uh, as well, because, you know, you, you talked about like, if scanning a barcode is going to make or break your fitness journey, right? Like you have bigger issues, right? And pay for it now or pay for it later, man. Like, yeah, my, right, opinion, right. just, my opinion went against the grain of most people on that app, yeah. but I'm not afraid to do that because I don't give a fuck. So right. yeah. <laughs> Beth and I were actually just talking about this yesterday, like all the other coaches on that app and everything like there's so many coaches that are like, I'm not going to talk to this coach because they're a competitor. No, fuck that. Like we're all here to help each other. And we're all here to help people first and foremost. Like I've, I can't, I can't even count how many um, smaller creators like have, that have reached out to me for help. And like, I'm, I will answer any question anybody has ever at any time, as long as I have time yeah. to do it, you know, especially when it pertains to growing on social media and, and stuff. Cause I know how frustrating it can be. And I wish somebody yeah. would have fucking mentored me in a way um, when I was trying to come up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And that's the thing. Like, so I was just uh, talking to Astrid on uh, Instagram uh, DMs before I hopped on here. And she's like, congratulations. You know, she has a wealth of knowledge. You know, obviously she works for, uh, for Team Bio Lane. So, you know, she's got to be good shit. So she was someone who reached out to me uh, originally about uh, getting onto TikTok. And I was like, dude, like, or not dude, but, you know, miss, bro, whatever, whatever, <laughs> you know, do it. Do it. Yeah, do that. Exactly. If you put in the work, it, it'll it'll pay dividends. It's just how long you got to put in the work, right? And like I answered all of her questions, and that's the thing. Like she she has a, a tremendous amount of knowledge more than than me uh, in nutrition and exercise science. But you know, we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses, and the the, the way that we help the most people is by not com being combative with you, with each other, so supporting each other to yep. grow. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And um, you said, you just said something there about your focus. Essentially, you weren't focusing on the end result. You weren't necessarily focusing on like, I got to get a hundred thousand followers, right? You were just doing it one day at a time, one step at a time. If, cause if you were obsessing about that end result to get where you are now, you're not going to be able to appreciate the process that you're going through and learn and, and, and learning and, and having fun with it, hopefully and everything. And that's a message that can, we can relate to our clients and everybody listening to is to stop focusing on the fucking end result, right? Like, mm -hmm. especially as you don't know what the end result is going to be. Like, if you say, I got to, I got to lose a hundred pounds and this and this and this, why you don't like, you might lose 50 and be like, I fucking love the way I look and feel right now. You know, um, stop, yeah. stop obsessing with this end result. And cause it's, it's ever evolving and continuing, right? It's, it's, it's a forever thing. Yeah. Speaking of Alan Aragon, we mentioned it earlier, but a great way to like transition into a, a couple of studies he referenced in, in, in the end of his book, when we look at uh, behavior modification or behavior goals versus outcome goals, he, he cites a couple of studies where even when training was the same and calories were the same, uh, comparing groups of people, uh, the ones that are focused on behavior 
versus the ones who just focus on end results, even when given the same blueprints. The people that focus on something like a, a 40% or a 35% increase of fat loss over people that focus on outcome goals. I got I, I to gotta hit this amount of weight or you know, I got to do uh, an hour of cardio every single day, like focusing on specific numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Then when, when we focus on behavior modification and support groups, the experience that the people got, uh, have is exponential. When, when you inherently value something, you are far more likely to stick with it, right? Uh, as opposed to being like outcome. All right. Like my goal is to do an hour of cardio every single day. Well, one, it's an un- unrealistic goal. But two, how do, you, how do you think your motivation and your confidence and how likely you are to stick with that when you fail at that versus just focusing on the behavior of doing the cardio or going to the gym, right? And it's these baby steps that add up into much larger goals, it's the short-term goals, you know, because it becomes, it becomes normal, right? Like we look at 10,000 steps a day, 10,000 steps a day. If, if you're someone... Like I had a consultation the other day and she's like asking about her steps. She's like, I'm pretty sedentary. Uh, my steps for the day are about 6,000 or 600. I was like, is that average? She's like, yeah. She's like, a good day for me is a thousand steps. And I was like, all right, like that's, that's step one is focusing on getting your knee calories up and your step calories. 10,000 is a long goal. But if I said start getting 10,000 right now, they'd burn the fuck down. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's, it focus on the behavior of just walking every single day, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But when that becomes normal, now next school. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Master that one thing and then add to that. A lot of people just want to start from zero and go to 160 and then get pissed because they can't do that maximum amount. But it's like, okay, well, you just gave yourself the m- most unrealistic goal right there. Pick something that you can absolutely not screw up and then keep doing that and then add to that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Taking somebody that's getting a thousand steps a day. I've done videos on this, but asking them to get 10,000 steps a day. That's why I hate 10,000 steps a day as a general recommendation. Yes, we know the benefits of getting 10,000 steps a day, right? We know how that's been proven to decrease our all cause mortality and things like that. But telling somebody that's getting 1,000 steps a day to hit 10,000 steps a day, that's just stupid. That's like, let's just try to get 1,500, right? Go on one five minute walk and you're going to get it, you know? And, and go from there, just gradually increase that. Yeah. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Not, not only is it better for actual outcomes, right? But um, there, there was a recent systematic re- review that looked at uh, all age spectrums and all ranges of walking, right? All, all the way to the high degree of like 20,000 steps, right? What they found is even an increase of a thousand steps a day was enough to reduce all, all cause mortality rates by 6%, just a thousand just mm-hmm. a thousand. So like, 10,000 steps, long-term goal. Yeah, that's fine. But I ran out of the gate. It's foolish to just be like, yeah, 10,000 steps, go, go for it. Right. Right. A thousand steps start there. That's a great place. Is that the, uh, the, I, I think I read that systematic review. I think I read the, um, review by uh, stronger by science did one. Is that the same study that I'm thinking of? Um, like the beginning of this year, it came out or is this a new, new one, newer one. There's an even newer one. So this looked at how uh, the step recommendation actually needs to uh, decrease once we, once we pass a certain age, right? That you okay. know, for older people get a thousand steps a day actually starts to have a negative impact that, you know, it's, it's more of a graded curve, right? Okay. Like, that makes sense. I want to say they lowered it to about like 8,000 steps per day after the age of like 60 or something like that. But yeah, it, it, I think, uh, don't quote me on specifics, but I think they, they went all the way up to like ages of like 80 and stuff like that to see how broad uh, spectrums affected everyone across the board. But, Who was the authors of, the, of that study? Or, or if you don't know it right now, like I'll, I'll hook up with you in the DMs and we can, you can let me know. And I'd like to look at that and, and put it in our notes too. Yes, uh, I will. Uh, I'll have to look, uh, look it up. So like one of the, one of the things that I do when it, when it comes to studies is I actually, uh, I save everything. Like I have everything on my phone and on my computer. So whenever someone's talking about stuff, even if I can't think of it at the moment, I can immediately go in and I have everything categorized. You have your own little research. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like when people are talking about knee calories, I go right to knee calories. Like, uh, so there was one I just saved by Bill Campbell recently that looked at 
What a, I love it. I love his. Yeah, it, like he, it's it's fantastic. He puts all the references in there, and like the the most recent one I, I saved on protein was looking at the amount of fat loss that people have in low protein diets versus high protein diets, and I think uh, like the outcome was for people who only get uh, get forty percent of their protein goals, they lose twenty percent less fat mass than people who are hitting at least sixty percent of their total protein needs. Which means so, they're losing muscle mass and, and scale and, and things like that. Right. Which uh-huh. we don't want. Yep. The importance of uh, protein and strength training right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how many people struggle with protein actually. Yeah. It, it actually really blows my mind when, when I see somebody asking me for advice and, and, or I'll start working with somebody and it's like 40 grams of protein a day. I'm like, Oh yes. my God, like what, like how, like <laughs> what the fuck are you eating? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it blows my mind. <laughs> That's one meal. I mean, if for you yeah. and I, right? For yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, they're so afraid of carbohydrates, okay? But there's no But they're not protein. eating protein. So what the fuck are so, you eating? Lots of fat from somewhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's wild, like how badly we see the vilification and the demonization of carbohydrates and, and then like they, they just totally ignore protein like i swear everyone right, must right. be on like a high keto diet like if you're not eating carbs and you're not eating protein like what the fuck are you eating and it blows my mind how people like the the sugar king you know he puts out the information that just makes you your head want to explode oh my god like i i remember he fucking did one on on watermelon where he's like ah he's like you know this is really bad you know, like Fucking doing this is bad for your weight loss, but like if if you're gonna spike your insulin one time, one time a day, like I guess it's okay for watermelon. And then like real bad news about fair life protein. Look at this insulin spike. I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, if you have the slightest fucking comprehension of what's going on here, like anyone, just go please look at the insulin fucking index. I'm bringing out my inner best. Am I inner Matt right now? Because I get fucking <laughs> like I don't like I don't swear a lot on camera, but good god, like fuck. That's all you can say when you see shit like that. Like what it makes the you want to fucking scream and pull your hair out. And and I literally yeah. like you said it's like go look at the insulin index, please. Because he's not doing food, he's not doing um protein or fatty foods, right? He's not doing fats or, or protein food based foods. He did protein. And that was, that was one of my videos that got a lot of traction was because I was like, thank you, you fucking moron. Thank you for outing yourself. Because if protein, if insulin is the driving factor of obesity, and you say that carbohydrates are inherently fattening because of insulin spikes, and the fact that you just consumed protein and it spiked your insulin, then if carbs are inherently fattening, then protein must be inherently fattening. And nobody fucking says that. Yeah. Right. Yes, exactly. And, and that's the thing. Right. And I was hoping I, every time I saw a video, I was like, please do protein, do protein, do protein, do fucking protein isolated by itself. <laughs> right. Because and here's the other thing. Uh, people don't understand the difference between glycemic index and glycemic load, because, again, very few people eat things just by themselves. So the actual the response is wildly different when you consume fats and fibers and it slows it down. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But the insulin index specifically shows beef and fish produces the same insulin secretion as fucking carbohydrates, rice, and bread. So fuck, man. Like, God damn it. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I love it. I'm no, I don't, don't ever apologize. For, first of all, for being yourself and don't ever apologize for swearing on our podcast. Fuck that. <laughs> this is how I do my videos. I just this get really our, fucking heated. This is our sanctuary. And I just, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I have no filter, so you're safe here. <laughs> yeah, you're all good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, mm, mm. I went a little super saiyan there. There's a reason my hair is this color. Well, you're wearing the super saiyan uh rose, is that what yeah. that is? I love that. Yeah, Goku, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over, over 9,000. Yeah. My son would love that shirt. Yeah, oh my god. And going back to that, too, that's I mean, that's just bias confirming. They're just confirming their bias and further perpetuating their own bias. But also the people like that, they're selling that fucking glucose monitor that they're using. To, that's what they're doing. They're an affiliate. They're they're getting rich off of that shit. 
getting millions of followers overnight because they're selling a fucking patch and demonizing food. And it's that's full. the frustrating thing, right? It is, it's like, it is. It's very frustrating. You know, I've been on the app. We've been on the app for fucking, I don't know, over two years. And I'm literally sitting at the same, the same, right? And these people are growing and growing and growing the more, and they're just doing fucking bullshit left and right, left and right. Right. And then soon he's going to be at a million and that, you know, it, it just, it makes no sense. Fear sells. Misinformation spreads yeah. like wildfire. It does. Maybe, it you know, does. You know, this is bullshit. And, and you know, it's, it's one of those things you you think people would would learn by now. Like a lot of the things that uh, you know, if they worked as well as they say they did, we wouldn't have an obesity problem. It, it, it's that simple. You know? It's it, it, those things work the way that they advertise. Like like the shake weight, dude. If, if you could just get a fucking shake weight. <laughs> You know, <laughs> shake your fucking way to weight oh, loss. Oh, the shake like, weight. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Or the, the the machines you put on your abs, right? And it just gives you abs. It's just convulsing there. You know, like, man, like everyone will have a six pack. In reality, yeah. I would think that those things are actually contributing in a way to the, uh, the obesity problem that we have, because those are giving people unrealistic false expectations. And they never they put it in the fine print, right, in conjunction with diet and exercise program, when that's really all it is. It's not just fucking shake weight. It's a diet and exercise that you're doing. It's the mm-hmm. lifestyle you're living. Yeah. Yeah. But but no, but if you want to change your if you want to change your body, though, now you're fat phobic. So this is, we're getting, this is the TikTok that I'm uh, warped in right now. And I'm like, I think that movement is what's keeping people fucking sick. Um, it, it's contributing to it a little bit, to be honest. And it, it's, it's like, really? Um, so you're going to say that someone is fat phobic because they want to better them, their health because maybe they're pre-diabetic or, you know, they have high cholesterol, high, um, what do you want, you know, whatever it may blood be pressure or anything. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's what I was going to say. Blood pressure. I had a brain fart. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and now they're fat phobic. It, it's like, you guys are fucking losing your mind. It's a nuanced conversation. It's something that, so, I mean, like we, we, we have, we have black and whites and then there's, there's nuance to it. Like there's, there's spectrums with, with everything. Right. Um, there, there is something to be said about the, the mental health of loving one, some body, so, yes. like your own body. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, that can be taken to an extreme, right? And the logic behind me losing weight makes me fat phobic is the same as saying, okay, that person's poor, so they must, they must be rich phobic. And the rich are, are poor phobic, right? Or I'm money phobic. Like, right. as I, like fat, fat, fat phobia exists. Let's be clear, obviously. Oh, yeah, but, for yeah. sure. But yeah, not everything's fucking fat phobia. Fat phobic. Yeah. The, the, the reality is nutrition. And exercise has become the new politics. It, it's something that it, it's so dichotomous. It's, it's so divorced. It's so black and white, just like people, uh, religious zealots. Now they are health zealots. They are the carnivore or, or the keto or the vegan or the vegetarian, or it's this or it's that. You're either with us or you're against us. And there's very little common ground in the place where we see the common ground. Like we are right now we struggle to get views because it's not sexy. It's not flashy. It doesn't sell. It's not polarizing, right? It's, yep. it's Oh, you mean I'm going to have to work hard and be consistent right. for a very long time to get results? No, that's not, of course that's not going to fucking sell. Yeah. It, and, and beyond that, I, I think a big, another big piece of the puzzle is uh, misinterpreting data because again, when, when we get into the nitty gritty, you can be overweight and be uh, have good cardiometabolic health markers. It is possibly too bigger and still be healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. Your overall health may be problematic, but you can still live a healthier lifestyle, right? You know, Lane Norton says this all the time in comparison to what, right? In comparison to what? We must establish a baseline. So a 400 pound person losing to 300 pounds have they improved their health? Are they living a healthy lifestyle? Yes. Uh, now? Yes, absolutely. Are they comparatively more healthy? Yes. However, are they in good health? No, right? It's, it, and it's this spectrum. So, you know, can you be healthy at bigger sizes? Yes. Does it become harder and harder and harder to do the bigger you are? Absolutely. Right. But I mean, like it, it gets twisted and warped into being fat phobic, right? Like it's, oh man, it's such 
nuanced, broad spectrum, but I, I agree. Like me losing weight, you losing weight. There's a big difference between speaking objectively and having subjective feelings, right? Like we talk, we talk about all the time, facts over feelings, me losing weight, someone losing weight does not make them fat phobic at all. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's the reason behind losing weight. Right. You know, pretty much. I mean, if you're losing weights because you think bigger bodies are disgusting and gross and you don't, that's fat phobic, right? That's just one example, of course, but it's, it's, that's why I say all the time, if you're doing it for the right reasons, then like, who the fuck is anybody to tell you no? And uh, yeah, yeah. Like, how dare you, you know? Yeah. But you have, you have people that are actually making people feel bad for losing fat. Which is insane. We're going to, we're going to, we fucking want to guilt people, shame people for everything. Yeah. Any differing opinion. Yeah. It's sad to me. Like you said, you don't have to go from here. Like there's two different extremes and it's like, there is the Hayes movement. That's they, it's it came out for a good reason, like with good reason. And they took it. Some people took it into another fucking like extreme. Yep. Um, and that's, that's what we have. Yeah. I agree with both you guys so wholeheartedly. And Unfortunately, most people don't have, they, they don't give themselves the time to really under, understand and, and, and appreciate the topic, man. It's, it's fucking hard, man. And I will say beyond that, like fat shaming is very real. Fit shaming is also a thing. Fit shaming is, is also a thing. It's something that many people have to deal with. And the reality, the unpopular truth is that many people fail their weight loss journey because they're fit shamed by the people that they care about the most. It's, it's the, the saboteurs are yeah. to be an other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your family, and your friends that may not be malicious in it, but if they're not supportive of you, they're like, oh, you don't have to go to the gym. It's not that important. Oh, just skip one meal. But what you you're not you're not gonna eat you're not gonna drink right like right oh, yes. you don't want any alcohol you don't want to go get drunk yeah very well yeah absolutely absolutely yeah great, great point and I'm in a I'm in that spot where I've been fit shamed and I've been fat shamed almost in the same day sometimes you know because because I don't I don't look the part of a personal trainer and and coach you know video yeah. your video they keep running of when you are running right, right? Yep. yeah yeah. Exactly. Like, come on. How can I be fit shamed and fat shamed almost in the same breath? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's insane. Oh, so, and I, and, and, and like I said, in that video about me being fat shamed, it's, a, it's all about people just projecting their own insecurities and, and like them not being happy with themselves is all it is. Like you're, you're making them feel bad about themselves. And that's not because you're doing anything to make them feel bad. They look at you and they feel bad about themselves. That's not your fucking problem to deal with. Yeah. It's not your problem to deal with. It's them projecting. Right. And that this, the same side of that token, right. If you are losing weight, you got to do it for you. You can't be it for the person that's yelling at you or making fun of you because, oh man, I can't think of his name right now. He, uh, he put a video out recently and he was talking about, uh, dude's lost, I think like 200 pounds. He's, he tagged, like we get tagged in a lot of the same videos and he put out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. David. Yeah. If you're losing weight to build clout on TikTok and build a following, like don't fucking do it. And like I, I agree with that. I you agree. have to do it for yourself. You you yeah. have to do it for yourself. Now, TikTok be a positive platform to build community and support. Yes, absolutely. But if you're losing people because it's going to give you likes, like you're you're in it for the wrong reasons, and you're likely going to fail. I can't stand it when I, I. It's so obvious when people are are doing anything for clout, and especially in our industry, especially other coaches and shit like that. It's like, come on, like you're just doing this. You don't care. You don't actually care about helping people. You're just here to, to further your own agenda and and be famous. Like who the fuck cares? I don't want to be famous. You know, yeah. I don't even like influencers. I'm considered one now, but I don't even like them. I fucking despise them. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had an interesting conversation. You, you say that my mom, my mom was like, uh, she's like, you're turning into an influencer. I was like, please don't call me that. Like, yeah, I was right? like, <laughs> my dad used to tell me that too when I first started blowing up on TikTok. Oh uh, yeah, because he would always say like, here's my son, the influencer. I'm like, dad, please don't call me that. And like, he would like he would be reading my comments about people talking shit about me as an influencer, and I'd be pushing back, I'm not a fucking influencer. And yeah, like, but he's like, he's like, but Matt. He's like, you are being, you're influencing people in a positive way, right? So you are influencing them. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I get that. I see that. I guess what I'm thinking of an influencer is like the toxic influencer that we're familiar with, right? That's what I'm anti. We, we, we have 
a negative connotation or association with it, right? And that that actually reminds me about uh, the first time I podcasted with uh, Gabriel Fandaro. And she, again, she's someone who I've, I've tried to get on TikTok and she's like, nope. And I'm just like, please, at least like, we got to do an, another podcast. So like, like we're podcasting right now and I'm recording out on my phone. I can cut it up and put it out on TikTok. But she, she's one of the leading uh, researchers in the world in gut health. And that drives me crazy when people are like, oh, that's terrible for your gut health. And this is good. Blah, 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 blah. I and made like, a video on that uh, yesterday. You did, yeah. <laughs> gut health experts. <laughs> If the leading uh, if the leading microbiome scientists in the world still have not yet established an objective way of measuring gut health, you do not know what the fuck you're talking about. Let's right? talk about like, gut so health please. a little bit because we don't really talk about that much on this podcast. This is a really fascinating sub- subject. Yeah. We don't know, essentially. <laughs> she works for Renaissance Periodization. Okay, uh, nice. Seek out Gabriel Darrow. Renaissance periodization, they have the scientific principles of dieting, they have this, uh, they have the scientific principles of strength training, uh, muscle building, all that stuff like that. And they also have the scientific principles of gut that was written by Dr. PhD, PhD, let's make sure we're saying doctor as PhD and not doctor as the people that say, hey, fruits are fucking terrible for you, right? <laughs> Different type of doctor, <laughs> the good type of doctor. Um, man, I want to say like her book comes with something like 400 unique scientific references in terms of, uh, of gut health. And uh, she, she's an all-star. She's an absolute all-star. And the, the reason why I bring her up is because when I was like, you know, you were one of the leading experts in the world, influencers in the world in gut health. She, she's like, she's like, let me, let me stop you there. Right. And I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I say something? She's like, I'm not an expert and I'm not an influencer. I'm an educator. She's like one of the big time red flags is when people call themselves experts or they call themselves Thank gurus. You. Yes. 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 Sorry. <laughs> She's like, I, I'm an educator and a PhD. And largely we see people call themselves nutritionists because nutritionist is an illegally protected term, or they call themselves gurus or life coaches because those are not protected terms. The reason why you call yourself an educator, the reason why you call yourself a PhD uh, is because you, you legally earn the right to say that. And people that are worth their, their salt will not call themselves gurus. They will not call themselves influencers. They will call themselves what they are. And I was just like, oh, like, like one of the, she, she did it very kindly. She did it very kindly. You know, I'm, I'm just simply paraphrasing. So a good, good transition from that is a recent study on artificial sweeteners looking at how it affects uh, uh, gut health, right? Dysbiosis. Are you guys familiar with the term dysbiosis? I am not. It sounds familiar. Dysbiosis, again, we still don't have enough understanding of uh, gut health, right? So uh, dysbiosis is a subjective term in gut health. And it simply means that dysbiosis is a change in the, in the status quo or the homeostasis, right? Your baseline. But here's the thing, researchers can't actually agree on dysbiosis as positive or negative. So dysbiosis can be both positive and negative effects because it only, it only describes a change from normal. Mm-hmm. So there's this uh, change and change can be both good or bad, right? Not, have and they so even established stuff. what normal is though? That's the thing, right? We, we have trends. We have trends. It's okay. something that just, just like we can see like, uh, trends in, in weight loss, where each day your weight can vary. We can look at averages in like our watches. We can establish trends with our watches, but it's a- inaccurate, right? We're learning more and more and more information. We can establish trends on what produces certain outcomes, right? Blaine Norton did a video on this, and he was talking about, I had no less than 100 people send me a message about this new study about artificial sweeteners finally be, being proven bad in human case trials, right? Because of what it did to gut health. And lo and behold, don't you fucking know the reason why uh, this is getting credit is because they said, look, proven dysbiosis, artificial sweeteners and gut health. Okay. But again, let's come back to dysbiosis. It is not objective, positive or negative. And when you break down the data, the artificial sweeteners actually had a positive fucking effect on gut health. 
in this in this unique outcome. But it's see, but it was a artificial change. sweeteners. Yeah, changed gut health. We finally proved it, right? Mm. It was a positive change. Positive <laughs> change, but you didn't but they won't take t- the time to fucking. Right. Yeah, they won't tell you that part. They, they'll conveniently leave that part out because it, they either didn't read it, like you said, they don't know how to interpret data, or they just doesn't confirm their bias. So they're not going to tell you that part because their followers, um, the people that are telling, like we think of like the Dr. Fungs and some chiropractor and whoever, their followers aren't reading the research. Mark Hyman. <laughs> Hyman. Yeah. If yeah. They're not actually reading this, the science. If they do cite any at, at all, their followers aren't going out and, and reading it. They're like, Oh yeah. Like look at the headline. Obviously the abstract said it right there. Yeah. It's like by, by no, uh, by no means am I uh, an expert or knowledgeable in, in gut health. I uh, like, I know some baseline stuff, but it's when people want nitty gritty stuff, I always refer to the literature that I have from Gabriel Fondaro. And when I work with clients that do have like IBS, or I worked with one recently who had uh, SIBO, other medical confirmed conditions, I, I confer with her. I talk to her and, and establish a baseline. We, we hear a lot about uh, probiotics, a lot, about how beneficial they are. And she was like, no, no. Gut health is so unique to the individual that you getting a probiotic that does anything for you, you have a better chance of winning the lottery because it's, it's strange Holy specific. Shit. Yeah. Wow. So you go out and you get a probiotic. Like it doesn't matter how cultured it is. If, if it's living or dead billions, whatever, right. If it doesn't match the fucking strain in your, in, in your body, you have no idea whether it's beneficial or not. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. That makes sense for sure. So you're telling me like, people selling all these supplements, the the plexus and the whatever supplements that are proclaiming to be an expert. It's almost like they're not. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she was like, unless you have a, a health condition, then again, like I'm paraphrasing here, I, I could be wrong uh, to the best of my memory. Uh, she said, unless you have a health condition, probiotics nine out of 10 times are going to be largely effective and, and not needed. She's like, if you have diarrhea, then maybe go get a uh, a probiotic, right? For the, uh, for the duration of the, di- the diarrhea. But outside of that, she's like, you taking a probiotic, it will have largely no effect that your, your diet, your overall diet and your activity level will have a much larger impact on your gut health than uh, any supplement will. And that's with anything really like, yeah. <laughs> Trace that back to fucking any issue, ail- well, not any, most ailments and issues that you're dealing with. Um, high blood pressure, diet, exercise, you know, cholesterol, diet, exercise, type two diabetes, diet, exercise, lifestyle, right? Like all this shit, like it all comes down to that. You can't trace it back to fucking supplements. Yeah. Diet, lifestyle. Yeah. Like, come on. And yeah. there, there's, there's some new interesting data looking out that compares like resistance training effects on gut health and versus cardio's uh, effect on gut health. Beyond that, some of the other n- new emerging data looks at, like pe- people think that, oh, like you're vegan or vegetarian, you must have good gut health. And now the data actually no longer supports that, that we know that gut health is based off of a variety, almost like having a balanced diet. So gut health thrives off of having multiple sources to create multiple strains of I don't even know the proper terminology, but basically bacteria is right. My understanding is that the more you eliminate from your diet, the more negative impacts it's going to have on your gut health. So yeah, you can have someone who does carnivore who could have the, uh, a very similar gut health to someone who's vegan or vegetarian because their diets are so linear and they're so focused, hyper-focused on eliminating all these other food groups that it, uh, it, it, there's a negative impact to it versus someone who just does a conventional diet may have superior gut health because they have multiple sources of fiber, multiple sources of protein, multiple sources of carbohydrates, multiple sources of fat. They work out, they do their cardio. And weird, weird how a balanced diet and behavior is almost like, oh shit, we already fucking knew this. It all comes down to fucking mastering the basics. You can't sell that. You <laughs> yeah. can't sell that in a pill, in a pill form or supplement form, I should say. Oh, man. God forbid you you eat a balanced diet and exercise, but no, let me go buy this. Let me spend thousands of fucking dollars. That, that aren't even going to fucking work. 
Right. If you guys are interested in getting some real fucking nitty gritty stuff, uh, Renaissance Periodization, the sign, uh, the science of gut health by uh, PhD Gabriel Fandaro. I think we were gonna yes. have to go check that out and get her on the show. Her name is Vitamin PhD on Instagram. Vitamin PhD, yes. perfect. Vitamin okay. PhD. I'm gonna yes. go give her a follow, and maybe we can get her on the show and talk about this. Apparently, I was already oh, following yeah. her. Didn't oh, know nice. that. She's the reason why I went after my behavior modifications uh, specialization, because even though she she is a microbiologist uh, and she focuses human nutrition, you know, she really started to present these ideas of support and the uh, the cognitive side of weight loss and behavior, and that uh, really pushing lifestyle over just outcome goals and. The more I dug into it, she's like, yeah, like if you actually want to become a health specialist, you have to, you have to not only, you know, have nutrition, but exercise, but you also have to be certified in the psychology of behavior as it relates to nutrition and exercise science. And uh, talking to her is what made me, what was, what put, put me over the edge. And it's, it's amazing when, when, when you think about like, what, one of the first things that like, like instantly blew my mind. And I guess like if, uh, when you hear this, it makes sense, but you never stop to think about it. And like just the, the, the one, uh, one-on-one of combining quantitative and qualitative science uh, together and that health, health isn't just merely the absence of disease state. It's also the, uh, the well standing of your mental health. Right. Mm-hmm. So yep. when we look at someone for someone to be healthy, it's not just being physically fit. It's not just the absence of disease. Like you have to be clear up here as well to actually be classified or defined as being healthy. Yeah, I know. I for, I took a mindset certification course with Casey Joe Ervatis. She's a PhD. Um, nice. Matt is starting her course next um, yeah. soon, probably next week. Yeah, you're so right. It's like it's that was a missing link in all of my um, education was the actual behavioral mindset part of it. I was like, I need to know more because this is not just about having them track their calories and protein. It's so much. Anybody can give them that. It's mindset. And it's like getting to the root of why someone is the way they are and having them figure that out. And, you know, there's so much to it. Yes. It's, it's something that like, I, I remember when first getting introduced to like, the ideas of plateaus being a good thing, right? And that they're perfectly natural. And uh, people are like, oh, like uh, they have really bad feelings or association with plateaus. And it's, you have to switch it. Like, it's a great thing. One, it's inevitable. But two, like it's a great thing because a plateau is defined by no less, no less minimum of four weeks of no progress. And this is something I actually had a conversation with Alan recently about. You had that recorded on your live, I believe, when you were interviewing him. I watched that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when just to uh, nail home how important plateaus are, Alan will keep people in plateaus purposefully to teach them how to become successful maintenance. Because the only difference between a plateau and maintenance is one is intentional and one is not. But just you do the exact same thing. It's just the way you look at it. And he's like, if, if someone is in a plateau, depending on where they are, each case uh, is individualized. Some people, we break them out. Other people, it's like, no, you know what? Just sit there. This is proof. And this is you getting used to, okay, when we break you out and we get back to this, this is what your life is going to be like when, when you finally reach your goal. This is how you maintain it long, long term. Or getting into looking at like motivational interviewing, like how you yeah. talk to people, how you set both short-term and, and long-term goals. And looking at behavior modifications and behavior goals versus outcome goals or with people that maybe um, struggle with, 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 with tracking calories instead of, or, or they're like, they've dieted so many times before and they struggle instead of setting up in a, in a, in a situation, where, okay, we're going to start removing, removing, removing. No, we've done that so many times and we know that you struggle with it. Now we need to start adding. Okay. So now we, we or proteins, or we add in more fruits, or we add in more veggies, or we add in, you know, healthier snacks, or we add in walks, right? And we focus on giving them more stuff instead of taking away because this has a profoundly different psychological effect on somebody. And then the, these are these are the great things that come with getting certified in a behavior modification, right? Like I remember one of the case studies on on the exam 
looking at someone going to a restaurant and the question basically was, okay, uh, situation, this person went to a restaurant, uh, you know, you read all their backstory and stuff like that. And uh, this person goes to a restaurant and they're looking at macaroni and cheese and broccoli. They decide to choose the broccoli. Why did, why did they choose the broccoli? Are they uh, practicing avoidance behavior or do they actually inherent, inherently value ordering the broccoli, right? And depending upon the person's backstory, th that answer is going to change, right? Philosophical questions on macaroni and cheese and broccoli, right? Like it's, just, it's wild. You, you, don't, you don't think about that when, when you think about weight loss. Yeah. yeah. You know what I would do in that situation? I'd put the broccoli right in with the, the macaroni and cheese. Maybe throw some chicken breast in there. Yeah. That's a fucking beautiful meal. Yes. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because progress for somebody might just be actually choosing the broccoli and progress for someone else might be actually choosing the fucking macaroni and cheese. You That's know? true. Yeah. It's different. Exactly. Exactly. Nailed that one out of the park. I remember, you know, working with, uh, doing a consultation with a client before, and, you know, she told me, uh, she, you know, her last trainer that she worked with, you know, they, uh, she wasn't allowed and she didn't eat a fucking Christmas cookie for the last mm. two or three years. Right. So and, oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, imagine Christmas time, not, not just Christmas time, but like all year round, but to be like with your family or friends or your loved ones or whatever it is and be like, nope, can't even have just one, <sighs> like not even fucking one, like. I can smell it. Can't lick it though. Like, come on. Right. Mm. But for, for her in that situation, having the macaroni and cheese is the progress. Yes. Yeah. Nailed it. Love Nailed it. it. Dude, that's all. That's amazing. We've been at this for an hour. Holy shit. Is that fucking crazy? I feel like we need to have you back and just talk more. Right. Part two with Noah. We'll have to have a part two. I agree. <laughs> we haven't had... I was gonna say we haven't had anybody on um, as, a, as a second time yet. Although Ryan and Hunter te technically were because of our Katahdin podcast, but yeah, we haven't done that yet. Just just let me know oh, when and where I, I, I do it in a heart. We will. I have so many more questions I want to ask you. So I know. <laughs> Noah, can you let everyone know where people can find you? Give us all your deets for the peeps. <laughs> so. The immediate place you can find me if you're listening to this podcast right now is the Cut the Crap Cut podcast with Beth. <laughs> Matt and Beth, as I fucking butchered that fucking shameless plug for your fucking. <laughs> uh, you can find me with Beth and Matt right here on their podcast. That's where you can find me for round two. For round two. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, TikTok, Noah J Health Specialist. Facebook is just my name, uh, Noah Jobin. And uh, Instagram, Noah Jobin Fit. Then my website, NoahJobin.com. Perfect. Perfect. We'll put all that in the notes. Yes. Gotta get some people your way. Get everybody listening, check Noah out. He's the man. He knows what he's talking about. And he makes amazing fucking recipes that I didn't get to chat with you about. I know. We didn't we'll get to talk about, about these fucking I mean, recipes. shit. Oh, check him out for his recipes we'll alone. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And on that note too, Noah, I know you have the, the mental health collaboration that you're going to be working on. I can't, I'm looking forward to doing that. We're uh, working on that with you or, or, or collaborating with you, whatever it is. I don't know exactly what it is. Is it a podcast? Is it a series or? The series that, that we're working on, Shameless Plug, uh, I'm co-hosting with the vice president of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. His name is Eric Bustillo. Like my first video with him on my page, like listen to his uh, credentials this man goes on for about six minutes and his credentials are the size of, you know, my, my entire arm. It, it's something that I think like we, we uh, discussed earlier, mental health is overlooked, especially men's mental health. And we, we desperately want to break that, that stigma about, you know, men becoming more emotionally vulnerable, I, I guess you could say, or uh, emotionally intelligent. Uh, so we're, we're shooting, we're shooting one episode a month and basically the, the, the way it's going to work out is whenever his, his, he's available, I mean, he has way more shit going on than, than I do. You know, I, I just meet his schedule and then it's, we're going to find out who's available for that date. And the invitation is, is there for, for you guys to, to come on, you know, I, I, Matt, I specifically reached out to you about that. And I was honored by that, dude. That meant so much to me when you reached out about that, dude. Sir, it floored me, honestly. Yeah, well, I, I value you. And then that's that's not to discredit Beth, but I mean, like... I'm not a man. <laughs> you're not a man. But, I mean, here, here's the thing, right? Like, 
if you want to come talk, it would be, it would give an interesting perspective. So the date that we bring Matt on, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. If, if you feel comfortable with coming on and discussing that as, as a duo, we'll have you both on instead of just. I'm game for anything, man. Like, okay. I'm down whatever, for anything. Whatever, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to like impose on help people, um, so. you know. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. We always say here, like fitness is for everybody. And that, and like you said earlier, mental, mental fitness is part of that equation. Absolutely. Yeah. It's something that not only does it serve to help with behavior modification, mental health with, with men, but then it's creating exposure for the ISSN. And it's also creating exposure for the individuals that, that we have on, uh, have on the show, because again, it's, it's about highlighting and making the best coaches readily available for, for the mass public. And you guys fit that profile. Appreciate that. Thanks, Noah. All yes. right. Well, that's a wrap with Noah today. That's a wrap, you guys. Thank you so much, Noah, for being on. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed this episode. So why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you.